What has happened to your friends? A coup forces them to play video games that rot their brains into mush. Video games? And it rocks, man! It's so cool! Except it melts your brain. Yeah. What an insidious evil. It must be stopped. <laughs> I will not fight you. I? I wouldn't expect you to, you wee little dress-wearing dwarf. You are trying to goad me. If that's what you call it, you pint-sized wood shoed ninny. You're just scared to fight a real man with that butter knife, you wee shrimpy daisy. I'll plaster this cage with your guts and use what's left in the haggis. Enough! I remember playing this game about three years ago and can barely remember anything. Published by Sega and rated T for Teen at a time when the show was still aimed at kids, it's 2004 Samurai Jack The Shadow of Aku on PS2 and GameCube. It's a very acceptable level by level hack and slash. Connecting the stages together are these hub worlds in a village full of citizens, mostly all voiced by Tom Kenny, the man behind SpongeBob and every Latino slash Hispanic character for some reason. No need to thank me, but I must warn you not to go that way. An entire civilization of Tom Kenny's. Please let me have a baby lizard. Lizard man with that voice. I want a Kenny of my own. Be free! Nickelodeon doesn't own you anymore. Now the characters look just so bad. Jack's brick face. Yikes. Most of the character textures are just one flat color, almost like they wanted to cell shade the game, but they stuck to a typical 3D-ish shading effect. Looks pretty bad, fam. <laughs> And then there's Aku. What happened to his face? It's all rippled up. How did that happen? Yo ho ho, he took a bite of gum gum. He looks normal when he scaled down to human size. Maybe the rigs or models messed up during the scaling process and they had no time to fix it. Awful. They really should have based the style off The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. After all, both Jack and The Wind Waker were heavily influenced by the 1963 film The Little Prince and the Eight-Headed Dragon. Without that, there would be no Samurai Jack, at least not in this style. Point is, the game could have looked so much better. Well, at least the environments are authentic with a variety of locations and enemy types. And look, just like Zelda, there's some little chickens wandering around. I wonder if I... Whoa! Nice! Was not expecting that, oh man. Now, if you're wondering about the story, it's a filler episode where nothing important happens. At least Mako got to voice the evil sorcerer Aku here, and two of the show's composers gave it their all. Maybe the other Jack games will fare better, but this one's solid with some superficial perks. Great music, environments, and pretty funny character exchanges like the scene where Jack's explaining to an archaeologist how he wants to go back in time to defeat the current ruler of Earth. Young man, I'm an archaeologist. You can't go back and undo my life's work. But I could end centuries of tyranny and bring peace to the world. What about my dissertation? You're right. Hello, Moto. Yay, another mobile game I can't play. 2004 Samurai Jack Samurai Showdown, a name so generic that it's impossible to Google accurately. I keep finding the real Samurai Showdown and other unrelated stuff. This here is just an arcade beat em up if you want to play that on one of these types of phones. Might want to bring a microscope too. I'll revisit these Cartoon Network mobile games when I can actually run them, but something tells me these aren't worth playing or preserving. <laughs> A Metroidvania on Game Boy Advance starring Jack? That sounds awesome! They couldn't possibly mess this up, and yet they did. <laughs> Samurai Jack and the Amulet of Time from 2003. Explore an open 2D world and unlock new paths with the skills you gather. Could be great, but for some reason, jumping is the B button. Thankfully, you can change that in the menu. What you can't fix is the mobility. It feels like I'm platforming with a semi-truck. Jack by default moves painfully slow, so you have to double tap a direction to run every time. And each time you land a jump, the entire screen shakes as if Jack weighs a million suns. It's unbelievably stiff. 
then we got the wall jump. You gotta jump towards the wall, but before you hit the wall, you tap the opposite direction you're facing and then press jump. But by pressing the opposite direction, you slow your momentum, causing you to sometimes miss it. Oh. Oh, it's goddamn just... Why? Jeez, Batman on NES figured this out over a decade prior. Just jump towards the wall and jump again. It should be that easy. To be real with you, I actually got used to the movement and was having a fun time, but that spark of fun sizzled out when I got to the combat. Just swing away. Will you win? I don't know. Just pray to your ancestors that you will. Swing and don't think. Treat Jack sore like a dick on a piñata at a sperm bank. Only sometimes does the block button ever feel useful. For the most part, be glad the enemies drop so many health potions. You're gonna need them mid-combo. And looky here, it's the first boss. Is it gonna do something? Oh wait, you gotta walk closer towards it so the boss fight actually begins. God damn, this is the first boss and it takes out all this health in one attack? A lot of these bosses, I have no idea if there's some sort of pattern or whatever. They take up so much damage, like you're just here for 10 minutes swinging wildly, waiting for their health to chip away. Sometimes they just stand there. It's either too hard or too brainless. Was the game finished? What a goddamn joke. So what exactly is the titular Amulet of Time? Well, throughout the game you collect four elemental powers. Instead of just going through the menu and selecting what element you want to arm yourself with, you have this meter on top. But the way it works is, if you want red for fire, you don't let go of the button when it's on red. It's charging up, so you let go after it passes red when it's on a different element. <laughs> This is for opening new areas, but they also encourage you to use it in combat. Okay, wind powers are good for knocking groups of enemies away, apparently. Let's do it. It's charging up. Ah, oh, let's get in closer. No, no, damn it! It takes so damn long that it's useless in combat. Again, just swing. Don't think. You also got these upgradable stats that honestly, I don't feel make a goddamn difference. What is the point of your magical MacGuffin? It's called the Amulet of Time because it takes a damn ass long time for it to actually be useful. And all the text is so difficult to read. There's like these extra colored pixels blurring them, almost like a 3D effect. It's so rough on the eyes. Why would they do this? Apparently it's a compression technique, so the text looks smoother on an actual tiny GBA screen. Not, Not so, so much, much on an emulated, emulated computer, computer monitor. monitor. Wow, game developers, way to make things harder for people who pirate your games. What a bunch of assholes. The only thing I liked about this game is the art. Looks almost spot on to the show. Some characters are not from the source material, yet I could see them fitting into the series. These jesters here kind of look like Scaramu the Sorcerer, a character that showed up in the continuation series a decade later. Way to predict the future. Although Jack has a flat color look like the show, but some characters have more depth to their shading, it does not match. Several of these feel like they belong to a totally different game. Is that the guy from Korn? But my favorite additional character is this boss, the priest bot. Yeah, you gotta stop this arranged marriage by fighting him. He's like Preacher Bot from Futurama, which coincidentally shares the Samurai Jack's voice, Phil Lamar. Maybe it was a reference to that? The path to robot heaven lies here, in the good book 3.0. Holy fuck, that's the second boss and he kills Jack in one hit, god damn! And as a Metroidvania, the map is so difficult to read, like the room you're in is white, while other spots are sometimes uh, light gray. Couldn't they add a colored dot or something? Such a great idea for a game ruined by so much poor execution. Damn. Well, before I move on, I gotta promote this other YouTuber called Cartoon Review, who has reviewed nearly every Cartoon Network game, even the weird Johnny Bravo dating sim that never released in America. I don't like flowers that are racist. Racism only separates us as a society. So whenever I see a racist flower, I try and teach it tolerance. It's the right thing to do. What? 
Of course, he reviewed this GBA Samurai game, to which the game's artist found the video and posted a comment. Apparently, the artist mocked up screenshots for a more faithful sequel should the game company get the Jack license again, but that never happened. Maybe someday with another company. There's a lot of potential in a Samurai Jack Metroidvania. We'll be back with more Samurai Jack games after these messages. Guess who? The sponsor of tonight's video, Manscaped, also worked on Female Sexes 2. We got the Perfect Package 3.0 kit. What's in here? The Lawnmower 3.0. You know what this does. I don't need to tell you. It's super safe too. No nicks, no snags guaranteed. Trust me. USB charger, yeah. Get 20% off plus free international shipping with the code TAXI at manscaped.com. Also, the Perfect Package Essentials Kit includes all this water resistance, high performance body trimmers, and liquid products. Keep yourself fresh with this home slice. With the Peak Hygiene Plan, you get quarterly replenishments on products and replacement blades delivered to your door. Again, 20% off plus free international shipping with the code taxi at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you, and so will I. And also this box, apparently. Manscaped. <laughs> From the game studio Soleil, made up of several ex-team ninja developers known for Ninja Gaiden, who've also developed Ninjala, a free-to-play ninja game, and Naruto Shinobi Striker based on that ninja anime, comes for the first time a game that has nothing to do with ninjas, but instead, Samurais. It's 2020's Samurai Jack, the battle for more time, or battle through time, released on basically every 8th generation console, PC, and phone, and... Whatever Apple Arcade is, finally, there ain't a single ninja to be found here. You son of a bitch. I was expecting a decent little hack and slash and got just that. Ninja Guide in on a budget. It's pretty good. <laughs> You got linear stages where you can switch between the sword and other weapons. Clubs, staffs, hammers, you even have arrows and guns for long range. It's a simple game, but all the breakable weapons, inventory, upgrades really add to it. These menu illustrations for items are a good detail. While the stages are straightforward, there's some branches to explore, some of which may require skills or weapons you get later in the game. Exploration is a pleasant surprise, but there seems to be a few invisible walls that really taint the experience. Same goes for the 2.5D sections. Sometimes they're for platforming, and other times it's just kind of an unnecessary hallway guiding you along the way to the next set piece. Without the extra axes, the combat feels maybe too dumb down here. <laughs> <laughs> I guess sometimes it adds to the cinematic adventure of it, but other times it's like, why was this section even needed? Oh, now, here's a pet peeve of mine. Many linear stages in games such as these seem to take about an hour to beat. That really makes it hard to replay casually, you know? Why not split them in half? Claiming you got 16 stages sounds better than eight. At least you can continue the game from the last checkpoint. <laughs> Now, performance-wise, I'm playing on a standard Xbox One S with a copy provided by Adult Swim. Runs well, except during the rare and forgivable sections where they're spawning an ass load of enemies. Again, it's rare. Graphically, they did not go for the cell shading art, although I actually really love the models. Kind of look like some high-quality collectible statues I would totally spend 200 on at a Think Geek store and regret a week after. The game mostly looks good. Too bad during the cutscenes they animate in such a floaty, almost amateurish way. Ah! And during the combat, some of the heavier weapon swings feel like they're underwater. It's like they slow down Jack's swing animation by 50% to make the bigger weapons seem heavier. I kept thinking the game was lagging, but at least the environments are spot on. They did a great job capturing the show. The designs transferred so well to 3D, but there's one episode I wish they could have recreated. <laughs> I only 
wish this or hell any of the Samurai Jack games actually featured the rave episode. Yeah, episode 28, Jack and the Rave, the one influenced by the magazine Fruits, which also inspired Jet Set Radio. But I get why they couldn't. That would require making a ton of characters, plus a whole different gameplay style where you can't kill these kids. This feels like a budget title doing its best. You'll be seeing the same few enemy types for a while. I love how one of them is the same species as Huntor, who only showed up for a few seconds in the show. <laughs> But that was merely a cameo, he's really from Dexter's Lab in the Dial M for Monkey segment as a villain. With the game's surprisingly good combat, I would so be down if his company fulfilled that cancelled giant robot Dexter's Lab entry we never got. About time you showed up, I decimated this city hours ago. I was worried those minions got you before we could tango a go 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 baby. Too bad for you, I do not dance. That is a goddamn lie and you know it Jack. Now, the previous Jack entries came out around the original series' run, which ended in 2004. Without a proper wrap-up to the story, Jack never went back in time to defeat Aku. But, after a 13-year hiatus, Jack was back with one more season to cap off. Fans felt the revival had a great start, but rushed the ending. Though, this game seems to want to change that as it takes place on the final episode. The story plays out the same until Jack travels to a whole new timeline, a dimension mixing iconic locations and characters from the past. Which, I'm glad Jack got to interact more with these characters one last time. Though, with the game basing levels off specific episodes rather than its own adventure like the old games, monumental set pieces to the series just kind of show up with no buildup. Oh, look, it's that place. I remember that. And tonally, it reduces more empathetic stories into big dumb boss battles. They're just sponges for damage. As the game progressed, I was mostly enjoying this retake on Jack trying to alter history in a new continuity that was until it came crawling back to the first timeline. No real spoilers here, but the ending cutscene is just footage from the final episode. There is a better ending should you collect all 50 of these coins, but it's just more the final episode with like 20 extra seconds of new animation. It was nice, I guess. It makes more sense if you consider time travel rules, like movie logic time travel rules. Not a huge difference, but I expected too much and have to accept this as a little side story, really. <laughs> Samurai Jack the Battle Through Time is a pretty good hack and slash. Ninja Gaiden on a budget, but it's doing the best it can on that budget. I can see myself replaying this game every so often. The time has come, Aku. <laughs> On the next all-new Samurai Jack. Is there something wrong? The music. The samurai goes undercover to infiltrate a raid of destruction. Children of Aku! Samurai Jack is in the house! And meets an opponent with martial arts skills to match his own. It's a fight for the ages against the dreaded DJ Salvatore. It's Jack and the Raid on the next Samurai Jack. Premiering Friday at 7.30 on Cartoon Network. Down, another shower. The big frosty dipper. Tanner.